Hello everybody, and now we're going to talk about the uh, modern uh, content by Query Web Part uh, that has been updated in the last uh, few weeks. In fact, the uh, modern content Query by Web Part uh, is something that we already introduced in the SP DevFX uh, Web Part uh, uh, repository, now under the PMP organization, uh, I think quite a while ago, something like two years ago. But in the last few weeks, uh, uh, we, and when I say we, I mean uh, me, uh, David Warner, and Hugo Bernier, updated the web part uh, to SharePoint Framework uh, 1.10. We uh, decided to keep support uh, for uh, SharePoint on-premises, which was there at the beginning, but now you have uh, in the uh, solution folder a non-prem folder where you can find the old version of the web part, and in the online one, you will find the new one with the uh, SharePoint Framework 110 support and all the new capabilities that we introduced. One of the new capabilities that we introduced is the dynamic data support, which will be the main topic of my uh, demo today. So, First of all, let me show you in action the web part so that you can uh, see what are the new uh, capabilities. And then I will switch to the code base and explain you how we implemented those functionalities. So uh, here I have uh, uh, the workbench in SharePoint Online. And first of all, I will add uh, uh, the content uh, query web part uh, to my uh, workbench. This is the web part that you have uh, in uh, GitHub. And uh, first of all, we need to configure the content by query web part in order to target a data source. So click on configure, and uh, you can already see if you uh, already know uh, what was the behavior and the UI of the previous version of the modern content query web part, uh, that now the UI is uh, of the property pane is collapsible instead of having a, a multi-step uh, wizard, we just have uh, all of the properties in a unique property pane uh, uh, with a collapsible UI. I can select uh, a, a source uh, site for my content query web part, and for example, I have a site with some uh, sample news somewhere here. Let me see if I'm lucky enough to find it. Sample news site, here it is. I will target the root of my site, and I will target the site pages uh, uh, of my site, for example, uh, of my target site. Then I really don't care right now to define uh, filtering or sorting criteria. I just want to show you uh, the output and how you can leverage the dynamic data uh, capability. So let me uh, uh, just close this one and let me focus on the layout uh, section. Here you can choose what are uh, the fields uh, to show. So for example, let's say that I want to select uh, the created field of every single item and that I want, for example, to select the title. And as you can see on the left side on the screen, in the uh, actual web part, uh, I see an out of the box uh, uh, output for my content. And actually, let me refresh uh, the uh, source, the data source, because I'm not targeting the right site, I see, because I just see one news and I should have uh, three or four news in the real uh, demo site. So let me uh, choose again the field, sorry about that. So the created field, for example, and, and now I have four news, and the title field. So by doing that, under the cover, the uh, modern content uh, by query web part is building an handlebar template, uh, which you can see by clicking on the edit template content right here. And you can see this is the handlebar template that has been built out of the box by the web part for you. Uh, of course, you can customize the output uh, and the layout of the uh, template, but you can have an out of the box one that you can just customize instead of writing everything from scratch. Now, the interesting part of the story related to the dynamic data uh, part is that now you can create uh, uh, your uh, own custom web parts and you can connect uh, those custom web parts to the content query web part and you will be able to uh, make uh, available to your custom web part uh, any selected item in the UI of the content by query web part. How uh, you can do that? Well, first of all, you can click on a button called configure item selector and by doing that, as you can see in the UI now, we have uh, still in the template, so from a, a design perspective, it is not the best ever UI, I know, but you can work on it customizing your template. But now we have, for every single item in the output, we have 
the ID field, which is a mandatory field, at least uh, under the cover of the template, because we need to identify an item by ID. And we have uh, a select button, which is the button in the out of the box template, but can be whatever you like in your own uh, design template. In fact, this select button, if we click again in the edit template content, is nothing more than HTML tag with a specific CSS class called select item and with a data attribute, which will be the uh, attribute to specify the item ID of the item that we want to select. So basically, you can create whatever HTML tag you like, as long as you will provide a CSS class name called select item, and you will provide a data-item attribute with a value, which will be the value of the ID of every single item in the output list, you will be able to leverage that HTML tag a button in my example, to select an item. You can use, for example, an image or whatever else. Once you have done that, you can add to the uh, uh, page another web part, whatever web part you like, and you can build your own web part, which is what I did in my sample. So this content query consumer web part is another web part completely different in a different solution which will be connected, which will be bound to the uh, content query web part using the dynamic data functionality of SharePoint framework. How can we do that? Well, if the web part that you build is configured to being able to consume an external dynamic data source, in the property pane of the web part, you can connect the web part to a source. By doing that, you can select to uh, use the content query web part as the data source, you can select to use the selected item in the content query web part as the source for your web part, and you can select the information provided by the content query web part. In fact, whenever there is a selected item, the content query web part will provide to all of the subscribers the web URL of the website in which the item uh, is, the list ID and the item ID of the selected item, so that you can easily go to the UI, select an item, and as you can see here, by clicking on the select button, the uh, external web part will be uh, in sync with my content query web part and will get the selected item in its own UI. Of course, the consumer web part can be something that you build to provide, uh, just to make an example, an edit UI or a custom detailed view of the content selected in the content query web part or whatever else you like to do. So. That's the uh, goal, that's the result. Now let's move to the code base and let's see how we implemented this functionality. So, first of all, let me show you the source code of the content by query web part, the renewed one. This is a SharePoint framework web part. And here I implemented the iDynamic Data Callables interface, which is provided out of the box by SharePoint framework. By implementing this interface, we provide all of the infrastructure, all of the plumbing that we need to make this web part as a dynamic data provider. Once you do that, you have to register your web part as a data provider. So in the on init method of my web part, I initialize with the dynamic data source manager property of the context of SharePoint framework, this web part as a data source for dynamic data. And just for the sake of having a predefined, pre-selected item, I define a dummy item, which will not have any URL, any list ID, or any item, it will be a minus one item ID, up to you. Once you have done that, well, you have to implement the actual behavior of the uh, uh, interface. So, uh, first of all, you will have to implement the get, let me go there because it's quite long, source code base, let me go to the end of the source code. You have to implement the get property definitions, which will be a method defining the interface that we implemented. And using this method, we declare what is the dynamic or what are the dynamic properties that we want to provide to any external consumer. In our scenario, it will be a property called selected item, 
from a title perspective with an internal ID of, of uh, name selected item. Moreover, with the get property value method, we declare uh, what is the value, we provide the value of the actual selected item in our scenario. So whenever a consumer uh, which is bound to our um, source uh, web part will ask to have a value, to have the current value of the selected item, we'll invoke this method providing the ID of the property, of the dynamic property that uh, the uh, consumer web part wants to read. And if the property ID is the one we are providing, which is selected item, we will simply return back the actual value that we have in the selected item property, in the selected item field that we have in our web part. How do we set this value? Well, we have an event uh, method, which is the onSelected item, which will receive as an input the selected item as a dynamic item, which is a custom interface that we defined. Whenever we get a new item to select, we simply set the value in our internal field and we notify all of the consumers that the property with ID selected item is changed so that any subscriber will get a notification and will be able to get the new selected value for our uh, um, item. Moreover, in the render method of my web part, let me go there, the render method where we create the React component that will do the actual rendering, we provide a hook to that event handler so that from the React side of the world, we can fire this event and notify all of the subscribers. So this is the dynamic item interface that we define and which will simply provide the web URL, the last ID and the item ID that we saw previously in the UI of the dynamic data web part. And we also defined in the properties of the React component that we have the onSelected item method that we want to uh, provide to the React component. Inside the React component, we simply have the logic to bind the handlebars template and the output of the handlebars template to the uh, event listener for the selected item event. How do we do that? Well, let me go uh, to the very end of this uh, component. And here, oops, we have the bind item selectors method. What do we do with this method? Well, this method will be executed whenever we uh, process the handlebar template. So whenever we create the output, the rendering of the output of the handlebar template, then we will invoke this method. This method, we will simply look for all of the uh, HTML elements with the select item uh, CSS class applied to them, as I told you. And if any, we'll connect the click event to our custom function called item selector click. In the item selector click, we prepare, we create a, a I dynamic item object instance and we provide it to the unselected item of our web part so that the web part will be able to notify all of the subscribers with the new selected item. And of course, to get the item ID, we simply read the, the data dash item ID attribute. So, from a data provider point of view, that's the story. From a data consumer point of view, let me switch to the other solution, which is a completely different Sharpen framework solution because you will be able to create your own uh, consumer web part. Here we simply have a client side web part built uh, with the Sharpen framework still. In the properties of the web part, I declared a bunch of dynamic property of T uh, members and the dynamic property is a type provided out of the box by SharePoint framework, as you can see here. When I have uh, one or more dynamic properties in the properties of a web part, I can then uh, bind them to a data source. Here in the render method of the consumer web part, whenever I want to access the uh, value of the properties, I need to try to get the source to see if the property is connected to a data source. And if it is connected, okay. If not, I will have to configure my web part. And once I have the properties connected, I will simply provide those dynamic properties to the React component rendering my web part. And in there, 
I will say try get value to try to get the value from my data source. And if any, this is a very simple uh, consumer web part. I simply show the uh, values in the output. The interesting part of the story in the consumer web part is how we implement the binding UI. So what we need to do in order to connect the data consumer with the data provider. And here is how we do that. Well, first of all, in the uh, properties metadata method of the web part, we declare what is the data type that we expect for all of the dynamic, dynamic properties that we have in our um, client side web part. Moreover, in the get property pane configuration method, we declare a group of settings configurable through the property pane, and in there, we declare two possible options. One option is to manually provide the value for those uh, uh, properties using the uh, classic uh, property pane controls. So we can configure the web URL, the list ID, and the item ID through a property pane text field. But we also configure an alternative solution, which is based on a property pane dynamic field set, which is another a control provided by SharePoint Framework. And inside this uh, property pane dynamic field set uh, control, we define a set of property pane dynamic field objects. Those property pane dynamic field objects allow us to have in the property pane UI the uh, correct behavior to bind my dynamic properties to the properties provided by the data source. And that's why here I'm binding the web URL, the list ID, and the item ID dynamic properties to the target source. Whenever I do that, I also uh, declare that I want to show the secondary group, so the one based on the uh, dynamic binding UI, if and only if I have uh, the properties uh, connected and configured. So I will show the uh, binding UI if that is the case, or I will show the, let me say, out of the box text boxes if I'm not connected to any uh, external data source. So by doing that, I will be able to get in the property pane, the dynamic connection to the data source for my web part. And in the render method, I will be able to uh, verify if I'm connected, and if I'm connected, I will be able to get the value inside the uh, consumer web part, and I will be able to render my actual content based on the selected item in the content query web part. Right now, in GitHub, uh, we have uh, the whole source code uh, of the uh, content by query web part. Most likely, after some uh, makeup uh, and uh, uh, code improvements, it, it would be uh, worth uh, sharing also the uh, reference code for the consumer web part, maybe just in a subfolder here called the consumer web part or something like that, uh, so that you will be able to start from there to build your own consumer web part. But the overall idea is that you can use with SPFX 1.10 the new modern content query web part. And if you need, you can also dynamically select the items in the content query web part and uh, uh, consequently update the UI of your own uh, custom developed uh, client side web part. And I think that's it for me as well, Visa. Now, I have two questions. Don't stop sharing it. And there was a good question from a chat window related on so this is a live query of the data, it's not search based query, right? Uh, yeah, we, when you're presenting we the data, it is actually doing a live yeah. query against uh, the REST APIs, so it's not a search-based yeah. yeah. presentation. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the differences between the search web parts, the BMP search web parts, versus this one. So this is a really mimicking the classic content by query web part uh, from technical implementation perspective. Yeah. The, the the other thing, which is just a, a nuance again on this one. So I think there was a picture of this one also in Microsoft Teams. So you could easily then surface your, let's say, Teams, uh, sorry, Microsoft, uh, sorry, portal news into Teams by using this kind of a web part as well, if that's something what you want to do. So because this has access on the Microsoft 365 and all of the sites and all of the content within your SharePoint uh, data structure. So you can easily surface then data using uh, this configuration. 
really, really yeah. cool. Really cool stuff. Thank you.